In this video, I'm going to give you a breakdown on how to beat Gaius Magorn, which is the story boss for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. You actually get this armor for beating this boss over here, which actually looks really damn cool. However, wearing it actually drains your health all the time. It's great. Now, once you've progressed far enough into Sunbreak storyline, you'll be encountered with a quest where it says Slay Geis Magorm, and this is the story boss that you've probably been keeping up with in the cutscenes. Now, when you start this quest, I recommend taking at least this kind of like dust looking one under the health potions, the easy far coster. It's a, an item that lets you come back here to replenish health potions or something in case you need them and you, you just might need them because this boss is huge, he's big, and he's really annoying to fight because there's only three weaknesses. On his body where you can attack him, the first one being his head, obviously, where his head will take damage, and his two big front legs, and also his tail. If you somehow manage to hit his tail, it's it's very hard to hit those. But those are the ones that are going to be taking yellow damage, whereas the rest of his body is going to be gray damage, which is not going to do as much damage to those body parts. So you want to kind of focus on those three things, his front arms, his head, and his tail in general, to get the most out of the damage here. Now, he has a ton of attacks, like throwing rocks at you, so kind of facing him head on is a really bad idea you kind of generally want to circle around him for the most part the biggest tip i can give you is not to ever be staring him dead in the face you always want to be on his like side or near his back like near his two front legs those are the safest places to be besides him doing swipes like that so you also want to keep out for when he does swipes he'll also do some crazy things like when you when you do enough damage especially in the first phase he will go into this kind of position here and he'll summon these rocks when you see these rocks hide behind them this is after you've damaged him for a little bit so he does doesn't do it often. He'll suck in anything that is not hiding behind these things, like these rocks that I'm hiding behind, and he'll actually damage himself with those red rocks and make an explosion in front of him like this. This is actually an attack that he's going to do later on quite a lot as well, so you need to be careful of that, because that's an easy way to just get destroyed, especially if you're stunned. Anytime he lifts his arms, prepare for it to come down smashing, so make sure you're not near the arm that goes up into the sky. So when he starts to like get his feet off of the ground, you should be moving away from that area or get to his sides or behind him as quickly as possible because it's very easy to get caught up in these attacks because they take up a huge area. Now when you have the Dragonair to signal unlocked, as you can see on the right side of the screen, you can go to this device over here, this kind of like bow thing, activate it and you'll see it will actually damage the boss for some nice cheesy damage and you'll also maybe even get an opportunity to just get off a few attacks on his arms. You'll see he also does like a head swipe where he drags his head along the ground. Doesn't do it often. This one as well, he doesn't do it super often. Don't go into the bombs like I do. They kind of explode after time. And you'll see he does this thing quite a lot as well. You'll see him just like swiping the ground left or right with either of his hands. Now, after you've defeated him or gotten him past the first phase, he'll fall down here after the cutscene. Don't want to spoil too much of that. And then you can actually go back to the base camp with that easy far cost item that I told you to grab at the chest at the beginning. This is a perfect opportunity to restock your potions because this fight from here on is going to get deadly like from up until here it was actually really easy from here on it's actually kind of difficult be careful the tail swipes by the way when he smacks his tail when you smack his tail and he like hits the ground with it you don't want to get hit with that it's a, a stupid way to get stunned now you'll see in this phase there's a lot of these uh things where he tries to climb the wall and you need to shoot these red balls on his back with you which are those like you know those little bird things you, you got to destroy those you do also have to be careful of these other purple balls that are flying towards you because if they reach you they'll actually explode and and dismount you off of the the machine now what you want to do is destroy all three red things on his back now once you destroy the final one you're going to want to dismount and run backwards the moment you see those red wings it's time to run because he is literally going to destroy that whole area where you just were so if you're still on that machine there you're about to take insane damage and might even possibly die so be careful with that you'll also start doing this now where he kind of shoots up in the air and summons like these meteorite kind of like bombs from the sky they are kind of like signaled on the ground by a red circle but it's also easier to just look up and just make sure it's not going to land on you and he also does like an explosion thing here just to show you that again he kind of like goes up and then he just like boom in the ground in front of him so in general, like I said before, do not stand in front of him because if you're in front of him, most of these attacks are going to hit you because they're all faced directly in front. He also does like a wind sucking ability and then a swipe right after that, as I'll show this just again in a different angle. The sucking ability after me being stunned and then smacks me like just, <laughs> just a cheap shot there. Doesn't do insane damage, but it's something you don't want to get caught by. He also does a laser beam, so don't ever be in front of the laser beam you, that's the easy way to die once he's almost dead he goes into this phase where he goes full on raid and he becomes deadly he'll go into this one thing where he kind of like roams around the whole arena leaving bombs everywhere in his wake wherever his feet touch 
you don't want to be near those bombs. In general, you just want to stay away from the boss and kind of just stay out in the open here and just wait for the bombs to all explode so that you can fight the boss again. So keep fighting him several times through the final stage here. You'll get broken parts and he'll be knocked onto the ground. This is a perfect opportunity to attack his head so that you can get as much damage in as possible so that you can finish this fight because it gets a lot harder towards that final 10% of his HP and it's very easy to die. 